Thanks, Angela. Um, hello, everybody. Um, I'm Susan Rodaway. Um, I'm a community councillor in Pennard on the Gale Peninsula in Swansea in South Wales. Um, I'm also operations director at uh, Vocalised Democracy CIC. So um, I'm going to introduce myself, tell you a little bit about me. Um, hopefully it won't be too boring. Uh, and then I'll talk to you about the, the journey that I've been on since I've become a community councillor. So um, I'm um, a wife and mum to three teenage girls. So life's never dull here. Um, I've been a school governor for, I think, 12 years now. So um, I quite enjoyed that. And when we moved to this area, I, I went to the local produce market um, after, I think it was the year in, uh, after we moved. And there was an advert for a community councillor. So I went up to sp speak to this gentleman and I said, hello, um, what's this about? Um, he told me to send an email asking for some information. And the next thing I knew, I was actually co-opted <laughs> to the community council um, at the next meeting. So, um, so that was... That was a bit scary. Um, the first meeting I attended, uh, there were about 20 members of the public present. And I thought, wow, you know, how, how does everybody else know about this? And, you know, I've been here a year, didn't, didn't even know it existed. So um, it turns out they were all very angry with the community council uh, because uh, recently there'd been an issue with safety in the burial ground and they'd all turned up to um, complain because the council hadn't followed procedures. And when I joined the council, I think it's fair to say that um, there were quite a few um, difficulties within the council. And it was a period of quite a lot of stress and not an awful lot of positive community engagement was going on. So. Uh, within six months, I became vice chair of the council. And um, after a few years of us sitting around the table, shouting at each other about what the community wanted and needed and nobody would asked them, I thought it might be a good idea for us actually to do some proper community engagement. And things have been done in the past. A, a survey had gone out um, to every household. Um, so that's about 1,200 households had had a survey through the letterbox um, with seven replies. Um, if you stop most people on the street and say, what do you think of the community council? Most people didn't even know that it was here. So um, I offered to do the legwork to try and find some funding so that there was no burden on the community either in terms of um, extra financial pressure. And so I applied for some funding through the local rural development partnership. Um, when the application went in, um, I was called in and I was told that there was another application in at the time to do community engagement across all eight of the rural wards in Swansea. And did I want to have a chat with the people behind that and see if that might help us to actually start doing some community engagement. So I had no real fixed idea of what it would look like. Um, I knew that I wanted us to engage as many people as possible. I knew I wanted us to raise our profile um, and I knew that I wanted us to stop arguing across the table about what people wanted and actually know what that was. Um, and so I met with um, Peter Anderson, who is the founding director of Vocalize, and we had a chat and I said, well, you know, this is this looks great. This, this is fab. Um, I'm I'm more than happy that we give this a whirl. And if it doesn't work out, then obviously. We'll, we'll look at something else, but let's let's see how we go. So um, that, that, as they say now, is history. And um, there was a job to actually take forward the Rural Voice project across the eight wards. I applied for it and then ended up in that job. So um, it's, it's quite serendipitous. And the universe definitely was sending me down, down the road, I think. Um, so... Four years on, I'm still at Vocalize. My roles changed quite dramatically in that time. And um, I'm here really to talk about the experience that we have in Pennard um, using the platform and going from what was a, a council that wasn't really uh, performing as well as it could have been um, 
the the diversity wasn't really there um, to actually a council that's now uh, won several awards in lots of different areas. So um, we decided to start using platform and I'm going to share that with you now because it's always easier um, to see something rather than um, just hear me talk about it. This makes a lot more sense. We'll have to bear with me because uh, as I am in a rural area, the internet's not not always fantastic. Sorry, let's just do that. Talk amongst yourselves for a second. There we go. Hopefully. Okay, is everybody able to see something other than just me on the screen? Yep. Fabulous. Okay. So this is a vocalized platform in a Pennard community. And so um, the way that the platform is set out, it's set out into topics which are quite general and cover everything in the community. Um, and then we have ideas. And this is where the magic happens. So the great thing about this platform is that we are not going to the community and saying we want a play area. What do you want us to put in it? What we've done here in Pennard is we've said, what are the gaps in this community? What, what do you need? What do you want here that will make life um, better? And so um, all, the ideas then come from people living here and everybody in the community um, can then say whether they disagree or agree with those ideas. And so what happens then is you start to have um, this a list of priorities of how to make positive change in Pennard. And so here you can see the top priority is for a new skate park. Um, we have 193 people engaged with this, so that's a little bit better than the average seven that we were getting before. Um, and the average rating is 4.8 out of 5, which means that um, everybody thinks more or less that this is a really good idea. I think there are just a couple there who voted um, that they disagree with it. So um, on the back of this, um, it does provide you with evidence of need, for funding applications and such like. Uh, 10,000 pounds and land have been provided by the community council to try and take this forward. The community charity have also pledged a further 10,000 um, pounds. And there are a group of residents now who are taking this forward and are going out to tender currently for a new skate park. And so without having that, we weren't able we weren't able to know that even that was something the community wanted. And so um, what we've done is used the platform to actually get an idea of the different things that um, the community would like to see. So that was great. That was that was a really great progress. We really moved forward from where we were, but I just wanted to explore the possibility of doing something a little bit more um controversial i suppose and so we actually started using the platform to do participatory budgeting in pennard um i did speak to the first minister of wales about it and he he did compare it to paris so pennard and paris are both doing participatory budgeting not quite on the same scale it must be said but um we are having a go so here you can see on the platform that there are 10 there's ten thousand pounds this year um to be spent and so if i just take you there i can show you what we did the first year that we decided to make this step so we thought there's not much point in having ideas suggested by the community if we weren't actually going to put uh the money where our mouths are so um the precept that we raise is uh, community money. It is actually a second form of taxation. And so the community pay a small precept in addition to their council tax every year, um, and that goes to the community council. So this is something that we spend a lot of time thinking about um, and trying to make sure that we keep the cost as low as possible for residents. Um, and this year we decided as a council that if we we're going to do it, then we should really do it properly. And so we put £5,000 for the precept onto the platform to support ideas and priorities that came from the community. So this is the first year that we, we actually tried it. And you can see here that actually um, the three things that we funded from the £5,000 varied quite a lot in terms of how much they cost. 
And so the first thing was um, for litter picks. And the community council couldn't run enough litter picks to keep everybody happy. And so what, what we decided to do was to buy litter pickers and hoops. And those are stored at the local pubs for the members of the community to sign out and do litter picks whenever they like. Um, and then there was an idea for a community hub. And the great thing about this is that actually you can also tie in the evidence of need um, with the expense. And so you can see, oh, I just managed my internet to take me out of there. Sorry. And so the community hub is potentially about a half a million pound project, but we needed to see whether it was feasible. So we actually carried out a feasibility study and um, that cost us 1240 as match funding for another grant that allowed us to do that. And so you can also then see that it's tied up to, um, to news articles as well. So you go from the idea to um, creating a project group if you need people to take things forward because you can also crowdsource through the platform. And then um, to the budget, uh, the budget being allocated and then finally you have the news item so that everybody knows what's happened. And so through the, using this platform, I'll come out of it now because I think we've done enough looking at that. Through using the platform, it's really made um, a big change at the community council. We have um, far more interest in casual vacancies. Uh, in the past, uh, the vice chair and myself have been running around talking to people, trying to encourage them to think about becoming community councillors. And we'd have vacancies that would be empty for, for months on end. And the last time that um, we advertised a casual vacancy, we actually had six applicants for the two positions and, and had to have an interview process. And so since we've been using the platform, it's raised the profile of the community council. It certainly improved the transparency and accountability of the community council. And the other thing that I've noticed as well is that actually the diversity has changed. And so we are a gender balanced council and actually have councillors from their 30s upwards instead of the majority being in their 70s or 80s. And so we are now far more representative of the community that we are here to serve. Um, so, yeah, so that's a little bit about me uh, and our journey here in Pennard. Um, and uh, yeah, back over to you, Angela. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know what people thought about that, but I'm hoping that you might post some questions in the chat that we can come back to uh, at, the, at the end. But I certainly, for one, when I first met and chatted with Susan, as a mutual aid group where I live, I thought we've got like, loads of different Facebook groups for different groups, you know, like the gardening group, the pantry group, this group, that group. And it would just be, it just really, really spoke to me about uh, a way of not only pulling all that together but also kind of uh, getting wider engagement too and you do have like on the foot on the ground stuff don't you as well for people who don't use the platform so I'd be really interested in like further discussing that in the group as we uh, 